Welcome to another Garnet Trust interview. Today we are with South Carolina wide receiver Peyton Mangrum. And Peyton, we were talking some basketball beforehand. You got the basketball, you got some ESPN going on in the background. We will talk about the finals in a little bit because I know you're more than just a football player. You like to watch other sports as well, but let's talk some football coming up. It's crazy to think that we're just three months away until the season kicks off. When you look back just in your journey as a whole, can you remember a time just the excitement being as high as it is right now for USC football? Um, well, I remember about probably eight, nine years ago, maybe. Maybe not even that long when right around where it was here. You know, my parents went here, so I watched South Carolina growing up. Uh, the stock was pretty high. And they won about 10, they won 10 games, 10, 11 games each year. You know, I feel like we're getting back to that now. So I feel like it's it's been a while since then, but we're definitely going to get back to that soon. Um, we've been doing doing work, a lot of work this summer, a lot of work in the spring. We're always working, trying to get better. Um, it's just it's just it's happy. Like it's a good thing to see, you know, being a South Carolina kid. Like a lot of people dream of this, so I just don't want to take it for granted. I'm glad we're getting things back on the right track. You mentioned being a South Carolina kid, a guy that grew up in Greenville, went to East Side. Mentioned the parents went to South Carolina. Was it always a given that that you wanted to go to South Carolina? Um, no, I wasn't a given. But like, it was definitely like a heavy option. You know, just I wanted to just go to school wherever like was comfortable. Like South Carolina feels like a home. Like it's close to home, only an hour and a half away from home. My parents went here. I've been in Columbia a lot. I used to run track. We had track meets down here every weekend. So Columbia is like. It's like a second home, really. So I was going to go just wherever I could play at. Um, it was just whatever football was offering. So Columbia was just working out perfectly. You mentioned about being 90 minutes from home. I mean, that's that's pretty much what I did when I went to go play college ball. 90 minutes from home, it was close enough if I wanted to get back home, but it was farther enough away. Was that kind of the thought process? It was like, all right, you know, I want to be able to see my family, but at the same time, too, it's time to take that step and, and kind of – Leave the nest a little bit. Definitely, ninety minutes is like I agree. It's just a perfect distance because back in February I went to went to speak to my old middle school. Like I I played middle school basketball. My coach is the AD at the middle school now, so I got to just go home, speak to them, come right back. It wasn't like some big issue. Now like I live four hours away. I took a whole day out of my life. Went to school. <laughs> went to class. Went up there, spoke to them, came back, went to work out the next day. wasn't an issue. But at the same time, like, I'm still far enough. Like, I feel like I'm doing my, I can do my own thing. What, what do you remember from your recruiting process? Because as a walk-on, I mean, the journey, it, it can be obviously different. But at the same time, too, it's not, you know, super, super different. I think there's some people that on the outside, they don't understand exactly what that process is like. Well, um, I had when I was in high school, I had like a lot of crazy numbers, but I didn't have like any offers. So like it's just something that I just like care with me. Like it's a chip on my shoulder every day, it motivates me to go work. So I get up every day, like I'm thankful for the opportunity, grateful that like my parents can like afford for me to go to school and stuff like that. Cause I have a sister too, she goes here. It's just they pay for both of us to go here. So I'm appreciative for it. But as I had like I have four preferred walk ons. And South Carolina was like the best one to fit. So I was like, I was just, we just go there and whatever happens, happens. I'm glad it's working out for me. And when you become a walk on, right, you come into a situation that obviously it's out of your control with, with the coaching changes and everything. So when you're in a situation like that, how much of that is something that you got to think about? And how much did, you know, once you had that opportunity to meet Shane Beamer and this coaching staff, it made you feel comfortable. Like, all right, you know, South Carolina is still that place that I want to call home. Well, like with the last staff, you know, like I was just, I was new, like I got here. I was, I was the last person to get here. I got here in August, right before school started in 2020. So I was just working, just trying to get like noticeable, just get better, get stronger, faster. Then we got coach Beamer in the winter or spring of my freshman year and uh that spring practice they just gave everybody a fair opportunity so i went out there just kept working kept working fine like you just kept getting noticed do what you gotta do like stay out of trouble do like make sure you're doing the right thing all the time and he just gave everybody an opportunity when he got here like it was no like 
a lot of people say that about their coach, but he definitely gave everybody a fair chance to play. And I like I, as a walk on, obviously, like you definitely appreciate that because you know, like it's not always going to be fair. You, you see it. I mean, we, we hear it every day, right? Competition, competition. It sounds like every time Shane Beamer walks into a press conference, he's preaching that. But yeah. it seems like that's the God's honest truth. doesn't matter if you're a five-star recruit that comes in or, or a walk-on. Definitely. Competition is one of our core values. We've got seven core values. And it's, it's like some bold letters in every room. It's in the indoor. It says compete. Like, we just want to make sure, like, if we're all competing, that like, we're all getting better. And we can only get because we're – we're with ourselves nine months out of the year. We play the season for three months. You, you got to work with each other to get better because you only want to see – you see each other every day. Like, if that person next to you is getting better and you're getting better, the team's getting better. So you just have to see, like, the bigger picture of it. That's why the competition is such a big part of our team. So in addition to playing wide receiver, you make a big impact on special teams. And I'm sure being able to have, number one, a guy like Beamer, who's obviously – I mean, it goes back to his father, Frank – being a special teams minded guy, but on top of that, you have a full time special teams coordinator yeah. in Pete Lembo. How, how awesome has that been, especially as someone that has made a big impact on special teams, especially this past season? Uh, Coach Lembo, he was one, he was the first person I felt like that trusted me to play. I played in every single game on special teams past year, all thirteen. You know, my parents came to every game; they were just happy to see me play. Like I, I hadn't played football in since my senior year in high school, took a whole like red shirt year, my freshman year, so I didn't practice every day. So it was like nice to finally like, just get on the field and like remember what it's like to play. And also like you get a different like appreciation of the game from a different perspective because we go through special teams like every day, like we do it every day and practice a big part of our team. And it's another one of those things where like, you can tell like it's about like whoever's gonna fit the role the best. It's not about the whole five star, who, who you are person. like. It's just whoever can do what you got to do the best is going to play. And I appreciate like Coach Limbo giving me that opportunity because played on every special team this past year. And like in high school, like I never did that. Like I did the returns. That was it. So I got like a different appreciation of the game. Realized like that special team like is a serious implement of what's take what it takes to win. Can you see an impact on just the mindset it's creating? with some of the players. I mean, we look at a guy and it's going to be a great example for the next couple of years. A guy like Nick Muse comes back, makes an impact on special teams. That certainly helped him be able to get drafted this year. Do you just see players in that room looking at special teams maybe differently in comparison to when you first got there? Well, we have – we special teams is a big part of the team, like I just said. So, like, if you don't really, like, it's going to – it's going to, like, over time, you're going to have to because we do it every day in practice. We meet about it all the time. Like, it's just – and it implements, like, the things that we do on special teams implements into your individual game. Like, so, like, the drills that we do and stuff like that, you can take it to – you can play linebacker, you can take it to linebacker, you play receiver like that, you can take it to receiver. So, it's not just making you, like, a better special team player. If you see, like, the overall picture, you'll see how it's developing your overall game as well. So, it's helping our team – get better and on special teams, but also helping you get better individually at your position. I know as a receiver, everyone wants to ask you about Spencer Rattler and the ball he throws, but I feel like there's a lot of disrespect. No one's talking about the best quarterback on the team, Kai Kroger. I mean, he hasn't thrown any completion in his college career. Bring me back. Bring me back to that fake punt against Tennessee and hauling in that touchdown pass. I mean, Kai is a guy that people just think, all right, he's a punter, but no, he, he threw the ball back in high school a little bit. Uh, Kyle, well, Kyle's one of my one of my good friends on the team. Um, I remember when we first we first became close. We got like a, like accountability partners last spring. He was like out of all the people on the team, he was my partner. Like we just randomly assigned it. So me and him became cool, and it's just you respect him as like as a partner because you know like everyone just like wants to like bash kickers all the time, but. He actually, like, I see him work every day about getting better to be a better punter, but people definitely forget that he can throw. So, and then with the play in Tennessee, like, we practiced it for a few weeks and earlier in the season. I don't remember when exactly we played Tennessee, but it was a few weeks prior, like, before, like, we hadn't practiced the play. So, like, you just something that you just keep in mind. Like, we're just sitting over there on the sidelines, like, hey, we're going to, we, we might run this because Limbo comes up, like, we might run this. And, and like it's just as a player, like you appreciate that confidence that the coach has in you because I know like at the time, like I just felt like yeah, like I'm covering kicks, stuff like this, blocking them, kickoff, punt coverage, stuff like that. And like and I'm a team player, like I'm so down for that. Like 
but it's just Coach Limbo was the first person I felt like trusted me to make a play in a, in a game like that, and I'm just glad it worked out for the best. Is it as ner- nerve-wracking going through the timeout, the commercial break, while they're reviewing it? You're in the back of your head. You're like, no, nah, I got in. I got in. I mean, what's what's going through your mind? Because we've all been there as from a fan perspective and just people that watch the game on the outside, but you're sitting there. I mean, does it seem like that that time's taking forever? Uh, no, nah, not really. Honestly, like, at first, like when we first they put up on the screen, I'm like, I didn't know. Like, well, he called me out. Like, I didn't. Like he said, I was out of the two. I didn't know. Like that they were reviewing it. I was just like, just happy to make a big play. But I sat. But like, I'm sitting there talking to myself and like. A few of my teammates came up to me. I was like, bro, I think you were in. I was like, I'm pretty sure I was in too, but like, let's just leave it up to the replay. Like, replay's 99% not going to be wrong. So, and then I didn't feel like I stepped out. And I, like, initially I thought he was talking about my right foot, but he was talking about my back foot. And at the same time, but once you saw on the screen, like, everyone knew immediately, like, yeah, I didn't step out. So, it was just one of those things, like, it's just one, like, I'm, like, I'm just appreciative all the time. Like, I appreciate him giving me a chance to make that play. So, like, could just step out at two like that would have been that would have just ruined all of it got to get an answer <laughs> well you made the most out of that 44 yard touchdown reception against tennessee you, you look at the wide receiver room right now there's just so much dang talent man there's so much talent and you know you talk about competition it's only going to be able to elevate your game and everyone else around you what what is it about this room because you've been here since 2020 you've heard the outside noise the outside critics i'm sure at times um, the best you guys try to do to, to ignore everything, you know, people were taking shots to the wide receiver room. But now it's like that room, it's it's looking probably from top to bottom, the most solid it's been in, in quite some time. Well, comes to play, it starts with our coach. Coach Stubbs is a great coach. He, uh, he treats us like, like we're his own kids. Like he wants the best for all of us, whether it's on the football field, out in the real world, <clears throat> whatever he can do for us. So when you know like you're playing for somebody that appreciates you and it's going to bring the best out of you, and then, like you said, the competition, like, we all want to see each other, like, be great. But we all want to be great ourselves. So, like, when you got that mindset, like, it's going to make everybody around you better. Like, we got, like, we got Josh. Everybody knows about Josh. We just got Corey Rucker. He's he's talented. Got A.B. He's talented. Didn't even get to see much of him last year. He's going to be he's gonna be good. We just got uh, Antoine. He's talented. We got, we got, like, a good six, seven pure talented receivers that could start anywhere. And – the fact that we're all in the same room, like it's just gonna make all of us better. It's not gonna tear us apart or anything like that. Cause we all have the mindset of we want to be, we want to be the best that we can be. We also want the best that's for everyone in here and for the team. What's what's the from a receiver standpoint? Whether it's yourself, whether it's some of the new guys, what's the biggest thing though when you have a quarterback? Whether it's you know Spencer Rattler or even Luke Doty trying to uh, work his way back, which was obviously great to see. Um, after shoot, not being too long ago that he had surgery and everything. But what's the from a wide receiver standpoint? What do you have to do to be able to develop that relationship as quick as possible, so that you know once you get to game one and game two, because you look at the schedule, uh, that's going to be a tough schedule at the beginning of the year. Uh, week two, you go to Arkansas. Week three, you got Georgia at home. So what do you guys have to do from a receiver standpoint to be able to develop that relationship so that it's feeling as good as it you know could be? come middle of the year or end of the year? Well, we got to – obviously, you got to work together. We got to be around each other. We got to develop a bond, not just on the football field, but outside of the building as well. Like, we all – like, Coach Beamer, he's big on family, obviously. So, we all – we hang out a lot. It doesn't just start, like, on the field. Like, we're, we're all brothers, like, outside the building. So, we got to do that. And then also, you got to put in the work as well. Like, you can't just go out there and when practice starts and just start throwing the ball. Like, you got to put in time over the summer whether we're throwing everybody on the same page, everybody trying to get better, everybody locked in, like, to what we're doing. Because those are all, like, the little things that, like, it may not seem like a lot, like, oh, we're going to a 30-minute throwing session. Everybody catch about 10, 15 passes, move on, work on your routes, do what you got to do. But those t- those 30-minute sessions, they add up over time. When we get to the fall, like, you don't want to take any steps back. You want to be moving forward. So they, they all come in handy, like, when it's time to actually put it to work. I know you were telling me before that you'd like to be a, an analyst one day. So with the NBA Finals coming up, here's your time, man. You know, Stephen A. Smith, move over. You know, what paid him? What you got to say? What, what you think about this series, Golden State and Boston, going to be kicking off or tipping off on Thursday. So depending on when this drops, game one may have already happened. But what you liking about this series? What are you thinking? Uh, I like 
I like the versatility that Boston has on defense. They, they can guard very well. They got Tatum and Brown, both two-way wings. They got Marcus Smart, great defending um, point guard. And they got Robert Williams, that's the great defending center. And they got Al Horford, who's a great defending power forward. So they got a whole starting lineup that can defend. But the Warriors' offense is ridiculous. Like, it's, it's unbelievable if you really sit back and think about it. Like, I appreciate it now because I know like 15, 20 years down the road, like, we're not going to see an offense like this ever again. And they're like, the fact that single person like Steph Curry can change the game, they're like people running down fast breaks, like looking for threes instead of open layups is like incredible to me. So I know like everybody says like defense wins championships, but like the Warriors are not a bad defending team either. So their offense, I feel like their offense is better than Boston's, but their defense is good enough to slow like Tatum. Like Tatum's one of my favorite players. Curry and Tatum, two of my top five favorite players. And like, I'm happy they get like they're going to play against each other in the biggest stage. But I feel like the Warriors just they got too much for for Boston. And I think it's mainly at point guard because Curry's going to Curry's. I feel like Curry's going to do his thing. Everybody's talking about he's never had a Finals MVP. Like he's not he's not worthy of finals like of being considered a great of all time because he doesn't have a Finals MVP. But I feel like he's going to put all that to rest and get his fourth ring. Well, I hope that's not the case. I hope Boston's able to end their title drought. Uh, it's been three long years, man. You know, growing up in Boston, it's tough. You don't see too many championships. There's only been 12 in my lifetime, so I haven't seen too many. <laughs> no one's going to feel bad about me. No one's going to feel bad for a Boston dude. Yeah, you got Brady, so he pretty much spoiled you for a long time. I've been spoiled, man. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this, though. We're talking basketball. It's always the conversation that comes up when you're talking with some of the guys on the team. Who's the best basketball player in the team for football? Or you, want me, you, you want me to give you a starting five? Like, who's the best? Oh, yeah, here? we need the starting five. Well, Josh is the best. Josh Van is the best for sure. Um, we had a starting five. I'm putting myself in it because, like, I, I heard TJ's one day. He said he didn't put me in, and I ain't really like that. But, and he knows, like, he should have put me in it. But if I would, I'll put Josh at the one, me at the two. TJ and Tonka will be my four and five. TJ Sanders, Tonka Hemingway, they'll be the four and five. They definitely mm -hmm. are two smoothest, like, like big players that can play. The three, I probably have a toss up between Chad, Jaheim, and Birch. Any of those three, one of those three. I don't even, I'll take Chad because Chad, my boy, so we'll take Chad. But give me the five. Give me the five, though. I mean, we'll someone's got to be coming off the bench. It's we'll all right. Six we'll man. Josh, we'll go Josh, me, Chad. TJ Tonka. You heard it right there. There's a team right there for USC basketball for the football team. Payton in the lineup, putting himself in. I got to. I got to make the shots. Best shooter on the team. Oh, love that. Love that. Well, Peyton, we appreciate it. For anyone that's listening at home, if you want to be able to support athletes like Peyton or any other South Carolina student athlete for that matter, not just Gamecock football, be sure to visit thegarnettrust.com. Peyton, we appreciate it, man. Looking forward to seeing you in a couple months to get ready for a new season. Definitely appreciate it.